The Great Peace March left Los Angeles about six months ago. After a shaky start, 650 continued their cross-country protest against nuclear arms. They will arrive in Washington, D.C. November 15th, but today they are near Toledo, where many Michiganders are spending the day at Peace City. Last week, we visited the camp while it was in Indiana and met three marchers from the Detroit area. Get up, get up, get out of bed and start the brand new day. Something about four-part harmonies and the doo-wop sound at five o'clock in the morning uh, gets people going. Good morning. Today is Thursday, August 21st. Today's walk will be 21 miles to La Porte County Fairgrounds, where we will have showers available for us this afternoon. Breakfast this morning will be served from 5.30 until 6.30, with the march leaving promptly at 7. Thank you, and enjoy yourselves today. Are there amenities that I miss? Yes, I miss all of them. I lay in my sleeping bag at night and think about my coffee bean grinder back home. I am only on this march for one reason, and that is because I have some things that I have to say, and this is the best way for me to be able to say them. The morning's calling you, and breakfast smells so good. I think it's the first time in a lot of our lives when we really felt that we were putting all our energies towards something really important. The march is leaving in 10 minutes from the front gate. That's the way we came in. At Peace City, the dream keeps everything going, although the going has been a logistical nightmare. To date, they've walked over 2,500 miles through mountains and plains and on welcoming weather. The dream keeps everything going. But at dawn, the dream can seem as distant as the next campsite. Sometimes you really have to remind yourself of why we're out here doing these things that we would normally not want to be doing. Mary Diskin misses her husband and daughter waiting in Birmingham. But she is like many here who had found their lives had lost some meaning when their vision of change seemed hopelessly blind. This commitment has helped restore their sight. An awful lot of the people here heard about the march and were compelled to drop everything. Some of them sold their homes, quit their jobs, dropped everything, and left. Left promising careers midway and felt that they absolutely had to be on this march. While the others march, about a third of the camp stays behind. They will walk in a few days when jobs are rotated. James Knight, who grew up in Allen Park, is normally a film editor back in L.A. The responsibility is to break down the camp and uh, get everything loaded onto trucks. Then the truckers transport everything to the next site, and then we unload and set up camp. Peace City is, quite literally, a self-sufficient, portable village. It has a government and accredited schools for 50 kids. Everything must be moved every single day. When the final destination is reached, many campsites from now, the journey will have cost nearly a million dollars. It will have survived bankruptcy, bad press, and times when the march was almost disbanded. Will the newspapers say we're all going to pack our bags and go our separate ways? No peace is gone bust, and repo men come take our vehicles away. Yeah, but you know it's bigger than that. Keep your heart open, you know where it's at. I've always wanted to express uh, my feelings about politics and, and the way the world was going in music. Michael Krieger is from Southfield and is part of a band formed on the march. Their music has become anthems of the cause. Nuclear weapons can be can be spoken about on a very intellectual level, but for us it's I think for most of us, just an emotional thing. We, we realize how uh, unsafe our world is with all the nuclear weapons around, and we intend to do something about it. 
Although it's easy to paint all of the marchers as far left idealists or leftover hippies, that's not a true picture. Certainly there are those from the counterculture, but they're a small minority. Among the majority, there are young and old, professionals and unemployed. I think that this march is a real good cross-section of society in general. There is the camaraderie of common purpose and hardship, but there's also ideological diversity, and with that, ideological conflict. We think of ourselves as a, like a big family. If someone attacks from without, then we all huddle together. And, but if no one is, tuck, is attacking us from without, then we fight amongst ourselves. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Welcome. How wonderful of you to do this. It makes the trip so much nicer. Thank you. The marchers have kept a sense of humor about themselves and the difficulty of their purpose. They encounter plenty of indifference, but every bit of support feeds their hope. I can't believe that people can be indifferent about life and death. <laughs> now, one person on this march is so naive as to believe that when we arrive in Washington, D.C. on November 15th, the arms race will end. Howdy. Hi there. Howdy. But we're raising the consciousness of America. Somebody has got to start it, you know. Somebody has to start the ball rolling. Do you guys know what we're marching for? Do you know what we're walking for? Freeze the nuclear weapons. Freeze the nuclear weapons. What do you think we're doing? Freeze the nuclear um, testing. Yeah, that's right. What do you think of all of these people walking for that, huh? You I think, think that's a good, it's a good idea? idea. Do you? I do too. That's why I'm doing it. All right. Hey, give me five, baby. Hey. All right. I got to keep walking, all right? Thank you, guys. Thank you. It convinced me that the political situation in this country right now is not as, not as dire as I thought it was. But the only idealism that I think I've come up with on this march is an idealism for the potential of human beings, and I don't consider that a false idealism. Welcome to Cap. Hey, it was great. Thank you. It's late afternoon when the marchers arrive at the campsite. They're weary and thirsty. There's root beer and Coca-Cola over by the kitchen. Eager for word from the outside world. Hope, hope, hope. And longing to wash away another long, hard day. A giant rain! The morale on the march varies, really, from marcher to marcher, from day to day, from hour to hour. It's the simple things that seem to make the difference on the march. Vision seekers, keepers of the flame. Keep, keepers of the flame. Well, the brothers and sisters here. The march has taught many to appreciate the simple things and the country they've traveled. What it's taken in time and effort, it's given back in a sense of belonging. It's an experience that will end too soon for most. I think that there's going to be an inevitable letdown for a lot of us, myself included, when we get back and, and the world hasn't changed, perhaps, dramatically. But I will always remember the looking people's faces when they realized that there was something that they could do to change things. It's a reality that no one will ever be able to take away from me, no matter what kind of political cycle this country goes through.